Hello, my captured kobolds. So, today we're going to be taking another look at r slash RPG Horror Stories. This post and a few others are from the user Castle Bravo XVC. He has a few stories about this one player called Ross. We're going to take a look at one of these stories. Let me know if you guys are interested in hearing more from him. Player writes awkward love story between player characters. Ross fancied himself a writer. And to his credit, in the most technical sense, he was. He wrote a lot. Man, did he write. Unfortunately, it's the kind of writing that I genuinely believe makes the world a poorer place by having it in it, regardless of anyone actually reading it or not. Prior to the love story he inflicted onto us, I had already gotten a pretty good idea of his talents as a writer, being his roommate and also being too polite at the time. I've since been cured of that affliction to tell him how absolutely terrible his writing was, or still is. I don't know. I thankfully haven't had to read anything of his in a while, as that friendship was mercifully euthanized nearly 10 years ago. Before I actually tell you about the love story, I need to set some expectations for you. If there were any justice in this world, I'd have actual examples of his... talents. But I don't. Actually, there might be justice in the world, as I don't have examples. In either case, you'll just have to use your imagination a bit in order to appreciate these examples of Ross's writing capabilities. To start, Ross wrote some poetry. I say some in the sense that John Doe from Seven kept some journals. Ross filled book upon book with his poetry. He tried to convince me once that there were different poems. I remain unconvinced, still. As the poetry he inflicted upon those poor, innocent pages all followed the same exact writing scheme, rhythm, and subject matter. As the poet once said, I can hold a note forever, but eventually that's just noise. It's the change we're listening for. Well, baby, Ross held the same note for near on his entire life, as far as I could tell. It tended to go a little something like this. I walk in shadows to hear you cry, forever waiting in the dirt to lie. Can't hold on any to my hope more, shaken by love it hurts to my core. I'm ashamed to say that as bad as that is, it's not nearly as bad as Ross's. In all honesty, it was kind of impressive what he managed to accomplish. It was like the room poetry. He was the Tommy Wiseau of angsty elementary school writing. Imagine you were in grade three and you've just done a unit in English class about poetry and been assigned to write some, and that you've always wanted to hold hands with this one special person in class, but never worked up the courage to ask them. Also, you are absolutely convinced you are the only person in the history of the universe who has ever felt the emotional pain for the yearning for hand-holding. And so, you fill up hundreds of pages in this newfangled art form you've received a rough description of recently. But everything you write is the verbal equivalent of when an anime schoolgirl's eyes are shaking when on the verge of tears. That. That is what Ross wrote for poetry. Tomes of it. An encyclopedia are you flooping with me Annika of it. One more example, because I really want to hammer this home for you. Ross? Well, he was oblivious to tropes. His exposure to, uh, I guess life, was limited. And so anytime he had an idea, it seemed to him that it was the first time someone had thought of it. For he had no frame of reference to compare it to. Which is why when he told me he was writing a fantasy novel, I could almost predict, verbatim, his concept. And when I say novel, I mean he had about 40 pages of handwritten BS that I still have not forgiven his parents for vicariously inflicting upon me. Take two seconds, think about the saddest, most tiredest fantasy tropes as a story concept that you can think of before reading ahead. Then compare what you thought of to what Ross thought of and see how close you were. I trust you'll be pretty spot on. Got it? Okay. It went something like this. Thousands of years ago, there was a war. I seriously flooping hate myself for even remembering this crap. And in that time, there were four sets of armor, forged to help combat the forces of darkness. 
They were imbued with ancient primal powers. One had the power of air, one had the power of earth, and one had the seriously flooping disgusted with myself that I can remember this, of water, and one had the power of fire. But there was a fifth set of armor imbued with an even greater power than all the others. It carried the power of the greatest element. It had the power of love. But it was lost. Until now, when the Chosen One arose. But they didn't know they were the Chosen One. They were just a simple farmhand. On whatever, who, and on, and on. Also, I'm not 100% certain on this, but I remember something about vampires in relation to the Huey Lewis armor. Okay, expectation set? You now know just how talented Ross was, yes? Okay, foreplay over. Now we can get down to the RPG horror story. So, my party had just headed north while en route to the homeland of two players, Ross's ninja, and in other players, Eric's samurai, for reasons, and encountered a Viking-like village under attack by ice giants. After helping defend the town, with the help of a summon fire elemental scroll that ended up seriously biting them in the butt due to a poorly chosen command, but that is a smug story for another subreddit, they learned that a dragon tooth in the village contained the soul of an evil dragon the giants wanted for dastardly and naughty reasons. And the only way to destroy the tooth was to take it to a portal leading to the elemental plane of fire in a far off cave. And because they are heroes, they accept the quest. The suckers. <laughs> Anywho, they eventually get to the cave, and they camp at the cave mouth, as they had recently been roughed up by Ramoras and wanted to ensure they faced the challenges of the fire cave at full strength. We had ended the session there, with plans to pick up the next session when they awoke. In the ensuing two weeks between sessions, Ross got to work. Now, I need to pause here and clear something up. Ross was not interested in men. Ross had stuff going on, believe me, and as much as I crap on him here, there are some things I just won't share on the internet as they were genuinely told to me in confidence and I'm not that much of a butthole. But Ross was not interested in men. Ross also viewed Eric, specifically, as nothing more than a good friend. Which is why, to this day, I am still dumbfounded as to why he wrote an epic forbidden love story between his ninja girl and Eric samurai dude. It wasn't pornographic. Well, not in the sense of parts going into other parts. It was emotionally pornographic in the way that Twilight is emotionally pornographic. It was the kind of tripe that a 10 year old girl would get weak in the knees over when they had no concept of what romance actually was. Just writing about it leaves a sour taste inside of my tongue. I cannot begin to impress upon you, whoever you are, dear random internet person who is reading this, and how freaking uncomfortable the story was. The very thought of an over 30 year old man writing a love story between his character and a friend's character feels weird. To me, granted. Maybe I'm in the minority. I don't suspect I am, but I could be. To give you a brief overview of what the 15 pages he proudly thrust towards me for eagerly weighted feedback. Ninja and Samurai are on watch. In the middle of a cold winter's night, Ninja starts crying. A concerned samurai asks what's wrong. Ninja confesses in shame about her fear of returning to her homeland, unsure if she had reclaimed her honor since leaving. Samurai, oh, so tenderly, opens up his fur cloak to bring her into his arms and hold her close. Finding comfort in his arms, she nuzzles against his chest, feeling safe, feeling his love. She slowly gathers her composure, reassuring in her own strength by his strength. And when the samurai says he has never met anyone as strong as her, she realizes she loves him, and they gaze into each other's eyes or something. 
and can each feel the love that cannot be, for they each have obligations to the world that forbid them from the comfort of expressing their mutual love. But they have tonight at least, and so they sit there by the fire, comforting each other as long as they can. I'm not a particularly wise man. I don't know the answers to the big questions. I don't know if there is a God. I don't know if there's a heaven. But I know for a fact there is a hell. Because I saw it in those pages. <laughs> Sorry. But I know for a fact there is a hell. Because I saw it in those pages. Hang on. I don't want what I'm about to type to be hyperbole. Be right back in a couple minutes. There. I just went and brushed my teeth to get the taste of what the actual floop out of my mouth. I can continue. And it wasn't just that it was terribly awkward. It was just so poorly written. The prose were simple. There was no subtlety or subtext. It was also terribly, obviously awful in every complete sense of the word. So I told him it had some interesting parts. Because I was just too much of a wimp to tell a friend their writing sucked and made me feel weird. When I asked him why he wrote, because I was positive no one had asked him to, he just said he had a neat idea about the conversation his ninja would have with the samurai while camping. And they did have a conversation, to be fair. But it sure as hell wasn't that. <laughs> and because I didn't take Ross's delusions and drown them in a tub like a sack full of unwanted kittens, he promptly showed the story to Eric. I've known Eric for almost 15 years. Not only is he one of my best friends, but he is one of the most forgiving of people. And I can say that with the full confidence of someone who tested him beyond the reasonable expectations of friendship because he forgave me for letting him read that story. Eric, to his credit, was pretty kind, in a way. He definitely encouraged Ross to take another pass at it, and he also warned everyone else about the story well in advance, and he didn't punch me in the mouth the next time he saw me. Like I said, he's a solid dude. I don't know if Ross ever edited his story before the next session. I do know he tried to offer it to the other players, and to their credit, they all declined, even without Eric's warnings. I'm pretty sure the two of us physically screamed loud enough to everyone at the table to get the message across, which is for the best, because at least one person at the table tolerated Ross only insofar as he didn't actively try to attack Ross. But when presented with opportunities, our cleric, Rod, certainly didn't sugarcoat his opinions. And if Ross had broken down into tears from some honest feedback, which I trust he would have. I sure as hell wasn't going to hold him to my chest. <laughs> I sure as hell wasn't going to hold him to my chest throughout the night in order to comfort... <laughs> I can't. I sure as hell wasn't going to hold him to my chest throughout the night in order to comfort him. And still, this wasn't the worst of Ross. He continued to find new and amazing ways to exasperate everyone. TLDR? Sad Sack writes love story between his character and another player character. The story contains confessions and fears and forbidden desires and all the crap that makes you shift awkwardly in your seat and question your life decisions to bring you to that moment. I totally understand writing backstory to give your characters life and sometimes it is cool to include another character when you're writing your backstory, but nothing screams cringe as a love story and poems that you write about the other player's character. <laughs> maybe, maybe if it was like a one-page story, that would be forgivable. Fifteen pages of love story romance between mm, the ninja weeb and the samurai weeb. <laughs> you have no idea how much I laughed about this story while I was trying to record that. Anyway, if you want to hear more tales about Ross, hit that like button or let me know down in the comments. Have you ever witnessed something super cringy as this? I want to hear about it down below as well. Thank you guys so much for checking out the content. Until next time, hope you feel inspired. <laughs>